Hi guys, I'm Megan Mullally and I play Karen Walker on Will and Grace and I am going to attempt to recap all of season nine as fast as I can. We started 11 years after the original series finale. We're all still alive. Turns out the ending of season eight was all Karen's dream because the writers didn't want Will and Grace to have children. Karen is still rich and with hubby Stan, but not for long. Wait until this season. Spoiler alert, Grace is recently divorced and crashing at Will's because they're lovers. Karen, of course, voted for Trump and tortured Grace about his win. Karen gets a call from her friend Melania Trump, their besties, and hooks Grace up with a gig redecorating the Oval Office, which is weird because Melania Trump actually decorated my house in real life. Grace is conflicted, but hops on a train to DC the next morning. Will also heads to DC to confront Congressman Sandoval, who he disagrees with politically and who he wants to talk about important issues that matter in his pants. Jack tags along for fun. Will and Grace run into each other in the Oval Office, realize they're both sellouts, and get into a crazy pillow fight. It's nutty. <laughs> Grace leaves a Make America Gay Again hat on Trump's chair Oh my side. Back in New York, Grace is ready to leave Will's apartment, but he insists she move in again, just like the good old days, because otherwise there's no show, right? It's called Will and Grace. While out, Jack overhears a young guy he hit on calling him a daddy, and he feels devastated. I don't mind it myself, personally. Will hits it off with a young guy named Blake. Who hasn't? Jack wants to look younger, so Karen gives him a full body compression guard. It's so tight, Jack can barely walk or bend his knees. <laughs> Will has Blake over to his place and has trouble connecting with him because Blake has no appreciation for gay history. So Will gives Blake a history lesson. Surprise, surprise, they don't hook up. Meanwhile, Karen and Grace get trapped in Karen's $100,000 smart shower when Karen accidentally voice commands it to lock forever and turn on. Can you imagine what happens next? Spoiler alert. The password to turn it off is Karen and Stan's safe word, which Karen eventually remembers is her ultimate sexual buzzkill, Grace Adler. Wait a second. Hi. Grace Adler is your safe word? Jack scares away the young guy he picked up because, well, I mean, look. Jack takes a job teaching an acting class for kids. Fascinating. Meanwhile, Grace gets a biopsy on her left breast. Ooh, the shit's getting real. And her emergency contact is called her ex-husband, Leo. Bum, bum, bum. Leo tells Grace the reason their marriage broke up was she always ran to Will instead of him. I mean, it's true. She admits she never forgave him for cheating. Well, I mean, no. They both agree neither one is to blame so they can move on. So, Karen crashes Jack's class and coaches a young girl, Tasha, through her first period. Jack gets a surprise visit from a boy named Skip who turns out to be the son of Jack's son, Elliot. Yes, yes, Jack's a grandpa. Can I call you grandpa? <laughs> Oh my God, you have to. Elliot and his conservative wife, Emma, didn't even invite Jack to their wedding because he's gay, that's mean. Well, guess what? Skip is gay too. Elliot and Emma are taking him to Camp Straighten Arrow for gay conversion therapy. We don't like that. Because we pray, we pray. We pray the gay away. So Jack and Will go to the camp to rescue Skip. So Jack has a heart to heart with Skip, very sweet, and tells him he's exactly who he's supposed to be. And Will makes out with one of the gay conversion counselors. I did too in real life. More than make out. Had sex in my dressing room. Later, Elliot shows up saying he decided to take Skip out of the camp and wants Jack to take Skip to his first Broadway show. Grace meets with potential new client, Eli Wolf, the successful owner of a chain of boutique hotels. Boutique hotels, very fancy. Eli sees a picture of Will and wants Grace to send Will his way. Grace basically pimps Will out to Eli, which Will is totally on board with. I would be. And Will makes senior partner at his firm and has a crisis when he realizes he doesn't want to be a corporate lawyer for the rest of his life. No, it's boring. Later in front of Eli, he has a breakdown. Eli gives his business to Grace anyway. Hmm, so that worked out. Grace asks Will to quit his firm and help her run her business. 
They'll be together forever. Karen runs into her frenemy, Beverly Leslie, played by Leslie Jordan. He's a genius. He's recovering from surgery at their country club. I must have died during surgery because the devil herself is before me. He's on all kinds of drugs and comes out to her as gay. Obviously, he's as gay as the day is long and everybody knows, so that's what's funny about it. Karen's longtime personal maid, Rosario, dies of a heart attack. So Karen organizes a quinceanera for her funeral, which Rosario never had. She refuses to come to the funeral and drinks at the bar next door. Grace and Jack fail to get her to come. Will hugs her and tells her to handle it how she wants to. This is really, for real, a very special episode. Karen finally says her own goodbye to Rosario after the funeral is over. You were my everything. Rosario Yolanda Salazar. When I got that script, I almost passed out because nobody's ever given me a chance to do material like that, and I was overwhelmed and really excited and thrilled. It's time for the Christmas episode. Merry Christmas. While waiting to be seated at a restaurant on Christmas Eve, Will, Grace, Karen, and Jack, those are the characters on the show, enter a history of immigrants museum that's right next door. They all take part in a flashback to the early 1900s involving a gay sailor, a single Irish mom living in a tenement, me, a greedy landlord, closeted homosexual, and his Jewish wife, Fanny. The sailor seduces the landlord to pay for the single mom's rent. What do you think's going on? It sounds like they're praying. I... I'll bet someone's on his knees. And they all lived happily ever after. In present day, it starts to snow, and they all share a hug at midnight. P.S. I had like eight children in that episode, and they were brats. OMG. Will and Grace take a baking class with this handsome devil, celebrity baker Jackson Boudreaux, played by my real life lover, sire Nick Offerman. Spoiler alert. Today's our 15 year anniversary. They're both attracted to him, and sure enough, both Will and Grace sleep with him, which made me jealous. When Jackson invites them both for a threesome, that's just too far, and Jackson is canceled. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack and Karen slowly go insane, trying to get a commercial jingle out of their heads. Karen, the song's gone. <laughs> Maybe the idea of Will and Grace being one penis away from actually having sex with each other cured it. Will and Grace have friends Larry and Joe over. Their kid just went off to college and Larry has empty nest syndrome. Grace hires him to help him take his mind off things and Larry soon confesses to Grace that he's in love with Will. I'm in love with Will. No! Grace fires him and tells Will it wasn't working out. Awkward, but Will liked having Larry there and calls him to tell him they can make this work. Misunderstanding, I think, is coming up. Yes, Larry misunderstands and thinks Will loves him too. Heartbreaker when he finds out the truth. Grace tells Will that Larry is in love with him. They argue in front of Larry and Larry decides to return to his husband, Joe. So everybody has a happy ending. Jack starts a job as a Lyft driver and immediately hits crazy neighbor Val with his car, played by the brilliant Molly Shannon. <laughs> I want to get hit by a car. Vince is getting married. Can't even remember who Vince is. Which, of course, makes Will examine why his relationship with Vince didn't work. Oh, it's his ex. Will's ex. Whew. Will, Grace, Jack, and Karen, those are the characters on the show, all go to the wedding. Oh, P.S. In this episode, I had a scene with a pair of dentures. Jack hooks up with a police officer, Drew, and finds out he was the first man Drew has hooked up with. Uh-oh. Wes Stray. Proud to have been your first. Have a long gay life, best of luck, emoji, horseshoe, steamboat, bon voyage. <laughs> Drew tells Jack he loves him and that, spoiler alert, Drew is married to a woman named Angie who does SNL impressions. That's such a random detail to include. Vince calls Will out for always trying to change him and make him better, but eventually they patch things up and Will can move on. I'll always think of you as my ex-husband. Me too. Jack decides there's nothing better than dating a closeted married man, so he actually continues to date Drew. But Karen outs Jack and Andrew to Angie, who does the SNL impressions. Don't forget about that. But Jack agrees to officially date Drew. He's got a boyfriend. Grace gets news that the bed linen she designed will be sold on QVC, but she blows it on camera by using the word moist too much. Blech. Will jumps on camera to save the day and in a passive aggressive attempt at upstaging one another, they win over the audience and sell out all of their product. And that's a wrap on the Grace Other Design Linen Showcase. <laughs> what? Grace starts dating this guy, James, who lives in her building, but James ends it because he thinks it's too complicated. 
Jack tells her to get over him by hooking up with a random guy. Grace says she doesn't do that, but then hooks up with a hot waiter. Wait, wait for it. Turns out, spoiler alert, it's James's son, JJ. He shows up just after James apologizes and tries to get back together with Grace. You're not gonna believe this. You're not going to fucking believe it. Jerry, Grace's old college lit professor who she slept with, also shows up. He's James's dad and JJ's grandfather. Okay? It's fucking nuts. They all wanna keep seeing her until Grace admits she slept with all of them and just like that, Grace is single once again. So you, mm-hmm. Grace gets invited to a baby shower, but she hates going because all the other moms just judge her for never having kids. Will teaches her to do what his family did, write the mean things you want to say on a piece of paper and stuff it in your pocket. Nobody does that. At the shower, Will befriends a couple of teenage girls and learns some Instagram etiquette when he accidentally deep likes his ex-boyfriend Michael's post. What's deep like me? When you like something from deep in your crush's feed. I deep liked him so hard. <laughs> Jack gets an acting job as a corpse on Shades of Blue, which he promptly gets fired from for fanboying over Jennifer Lopez because he can't just lay there and be a corpse who wants to talk to her. This is how you do it, Jackass. You know my name. She knows my name. She's so pretty that... It makes you sick. Meanwhile, Karen gets the kids from Jack's class to use their tiny, nimble hands to cut and sew some curtains together for a production. Uh-oh. Spoiler alert. Feelings Grace wrote down end up in the jar filled with wishes for the baby, including rot in hell, you smug little puke. You're never gonna guess what happens. But Grace and the moms make amends, and the teen girls convince Will to call Michael. Will and Michael get back together, but Jack and Grace worry Michael is using Will. Jack warns Will that Michael is using him for his money, but Will doesn't believe him. Until Michael asks Will to invest in his gym, Will is heartbroken. He and Jack make a pact that if they're not with any Everybody, when they're old, they get someone to push them off the Brooklyn Bridge. I do, Will Truman. <laughs> really weird pact. Karen is invited to Trump's birthday party, as was I, and wants MAGA cake. But the baker, played by Vanessa Bayer, who is brilliant and I love, refuses to make it. You're refusing to make me a cake because you don't like what it says? That's correct. Am I crying now? I'm probably crying. Grace takes action as much as she hates it because even people with horrible beliefs have rights. That's true. Grace gets the baker to make the cake, but not before Grace's face ends up in a cake that says, I'm a gay on it. Like MAGA with an I and a Y. Although it may not look like it. I have won. <laughs> Jack takes a huge step and asks Drew to move in with them. But Drew says that they should see other people. What? No. <sighs> Meanwhile, Grace tricks Will into coming with her to her dad Martin's house to celebrate her dead mother's birthday with Martin and her sisters. Turns out her sisters are trying to get Martin to sell the house. Karen goes on a romantic retreat, not with husband Stan, but with her lover, Malcolm, played by Alec Baldwin, my lover in real life. Jack shows up and catches them, and Malcolm tells Karen to finally decide between him and Stan. I mean, that's fair. Grace asks Will to help convince her dad not to sell the house, but Will agrees it would be good for Martin to move on with his life. Grace is pissed, especially when Martin says he'll move in with Will and Grace until he finds another place. No, nobody wants that. So Martin moves in and that's when Will's mom, Marilyn, the tramp, shows up. Spoiler alert. Grace called her as revenge. Okay, babies. Say hello to your brother. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack goes to Ibiza to get over Drew. He brings home a Stefan, a cute flight attendant he met there. Is this chef lounge taken? Are you? <laughs> Brian Jordan Alvarez plays him, so brilliant. Karen chooses Stan over Malcolm and they both share one last kiss via Smitty. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. <sighs> Thank you. Alec Baldwin and I had a whole scene where we had to have sex without touching. Super, super fun to do. Will and Grace catch their parents having sex and Martin proposes to Marilyn. Could you believe these twists and turns? My gosh. Jack asked Stefan if he will ask Jack to marry him, which he does. There's so much happening. And Jack points out that once their parents are married, Will and Grace will technically be brother and sister. Whew. What a roller coaster. <laughs>